talked about the formation of images by flat mirrors, and now we'll talk about the formation of images by spherical mirrors. Do they form images? They sure do. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't have some of the most beautiful astronomical photographs that we actually have. The Hubble Space Telescope is a convex mirror. Parabolic, as it turns out, but it forms images similar to the images that we'll talk about for these problems. So we'll talk about principal rays, and we'll use these to locate and characterize the image formed at different distances from different kinds of mirrors. First of all, a demonstration. This is a demonstration of the images formed by a convex mirror. This a concave mirror, that is. This uh, mirror is concave in the sense, you can think of it as a cave, it has like an opening to it, and that's uh, the concavity. This particular mirror has a focal length of 80 centimeters, so between uh, my two fingers here. So parallel rays from infinity would come in and focus at this point, about 80 centimeters away from the, from the mirror. And as we've discussed, the focal point is uh, half of the radius of curvature. So the radius of curvature must therefore be 160 centimeters about out to here. And um, I've placed these two uh, erasers here and here at the approximate focal length and radius of curvature, which is twice the focal length, for reference. So what I'm going to do is start with my nose against the mirror and then back up slowly, explaining what the image looks like. And then the cutaways will, will allow you to see, um, from my perspective, what we're seeing. So my nose in the mirror, then backing up slowly, approaching the focal point, And my image is enlarging. It's getting bigger. At the focal point, the image gets huge. And then just beyond the focal point, you can see the image is still huge, but it's inverted. And then as I move past the focal point toward the radius of curvature, the image is shrinking in size until at the radius of curvature, the image is now unmagnified. The magnification is 1. Beyond the radius of curvature, the magnification becomes less than 1, and the, the image is therefore reduced and still inverted. OK, one small correction on that one. We, we'll talk about the magnification. And I'd said that the magnification when I was standing at the center of curvature was 1. It's actually negative 1 because the image was inverted and that minus sign gives you the information about inversion. But either way, the, the absolute value of it was 1 because it was not magnified. Okay, another video using a foam ball. This is a demonstration of the image formed by a concave mirror. This is a concave mirror, so it's hollow on the inside. And I have this red and blue ball that I'm going to take an image of. The nice thing about this ball is it have a, has a top side and a bottom side, and we'll be able to see when the image is upright and when it's inverted. When the ball, which is the object, is close to the mirror, the image formed in the mirror is upright. So you'll see a ball in the mirror with the red side up, the same as the ball is in reality. As I move farther and farther from the mirror, the image should be getting bigger, but still upright. Until we reach the focal point, where right at that point the image gets enormous. And then beyond that point, if we start moving beyond that point, you'll see that the image is inverted and quite large. Then as we continue to move further and further away from the mirror, farther from the focal point, which is right here, the image gets smaller and smaller, but it continues to be inverted till we get out to here. So 
the focal point is here, uh, roughly where the ball is right now, and uh, parallel rays from infinity that come in and hit the mirror are going to uh, converge on this very spot. There's also another spot that's important for mirrors, and that's twice the distance um, of the focal point. So we're going to double the distance here, and that's the center of curvature of the mirror. And the way that works is that rays leaving that center of curvature and hitting the mirror bounce perpendicularly off of the mirror and come right back to that same spot. And so uh, we can see all this in motion by just setting, setting this pendulum in motion. Let me try that one more time. These two demonstrations can <clears throat> help you remember, uh, I, visually, it helps you remember all the different uh, positions. Remember when I had my face up close to that concave mirror, the image was upright, virtual, and slightly magnified. And then as I moved my face or the ball further and further from the mirror, the image got bigger, more and more magnified but still upright and still virtual. And then we got to the focal point where the image was enormous. And then beyond the focal point, the image then inverted. So the ball turned upside down and then got smaller and smaller and smaller. And then at the center of curvature, the image was equal in size to the object. The ball was the same size in reality as it was in the, in the image, although inverted. And then continuing further back, the, the object remained inverted and got smaller and smaller and smaller. That's the basic concept. Uh, we'll do a lot with, with uh, ray diagrams and with math to do this, but that's the basic idea. And speaking of ray diagrams, we want to talk about principal rays. These are helpful in locating images. And, and the, the concepts in the rest of this section will be drawing these kinds of um, principal rays to try and understand and locate the image. Suppose we have an object denoted by this red arrow, and we're interested in all of the rays that leave the tip point of that object, the top of it. The principal rays are particularly symmetric rays that help us locate images. One of the principal rays, which is labeled number one here, is a paraxial ray. It's parallel to the principal axis. It comes, it hits the mirror, and by definition, the focal point is where paraxial rays reflecting from the mirror converge. So that ray reflecting from the mirror must go through the focal point by, the defini by definition. Well, uh, here's the same object, but let's look at a second ray. This ray instead goes straight from the tip of the object through the focal point. What does it do? Well, it proceeds through, hits the mirror, and then it comes off as a paraxial ray, meaning parallel to the principal axis. And you say, well, how do you know that? And I say, by the principle of reversibility, if you instead reverse this light ray and have it come in from infinity parallel to the principal axis, hit the uh, mirror, what's it going to do? By definition, it's going to reflect from the mirror and go through the focal point. And so all we have to do is reverse time, and, and we have the ray that we need that leaves the tip of the object, passes through the focal point, hits the mirror. So that's number two. And number three takes advantage of uh, our recollection that this mirror was cut from a sphere. And if you start any line from the center of a sphere and go out to the surface of the sphere, that line will be perpendicular to the surface of the sphere, sphere at that point, and it will reflect back on itself. Same thing here. If we have a, a ray that leaves the tip of this object 
and heads along the line between the center of curvature and the tip point here. So it heads out in this direction. It'll hit the mirror and be perpendicular to the mirror at that point and reflect right back on itself and then come back through this point. All right, so those are the three principal rays. There are others that we can look at uh, that are also symmetric, but these are very helpful in locating images. So, 25.8. This is similar to the, uh, in fact, the wording is almost identical to the uh, concept that we did with a plane mirror, trying to find the image due to a plane mirror. But these are a little bit more fun because we have a, a focus and radius of curvature, et cetera, et cetera. Draw principal rays to locate and characterize the image, real, virtual, upright, inverted, enlarged, reduced, unmagnified, produced by a concave mirror with the object inside the focal point. Then in uh, subsequent, we'll do B, where we place the object between the focal point and the center of curvature, and then C, we'll do outside the center of the curvature. But right now, inside of the focal point. So let's, um, and I'd like for you to be able to draw these diagrams, because when you get stuck on a, a desert island and you've got a, a little piece of a, a Coke bottle that you're used to sending messages uh, to try and get yourself rescued, you need to know how to do, the, how to do these uh, geometric optics. So here's the mirror. Here's a principal axis. And Let's say the focal point is here, and the center of curvature is twice the distance. Okay? Happy day. Now, we're told that the object is supposed to be inside of the focal point. So let's put an object inside the focal point. There's my object. And now let's see if we can try and locate the image. Well, the first one that we looked at was a paraxial ray leaving the top of the object. All right, it goes, it hits the mirror, what does it do? Well, you say, by definition, it reflects from the mirror and goes through the focal point because it's a paraxial ray. Okay, there we go on that one. Let's look at a ray that we can't, we can't do a ray that goes directly through the focal point here. We can do one that is along the line between the tip of this object and the center of curvature. So if we imagine this line looks like that, then this ray comes out and reflects perpendicularly because it's along one of the radiuses of the sphere and then comes back on itself and passes through the center of curvature. Okay, We can also look at another one, uh, a symmetric ray. Uh, what about the one that goes like that? Angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. Now we've got three rays, one, two, three. And we want to know where the image is. So in looking for an image, what you're going to be wanting to look for is where those rays reflected from the mirror converge or appear to converge. Well, they don't appear to be converging out here. They're getting further and further apart. So we're going to expect an image on the other side, a virtual image. So if we uh, extend out this ray, extend out this one, and extend out this one, we're looking like they're, they're converging right about here. So we're going to expect an image that's right about here. It's where those rays appear to converge. <coughs> well, let's talk about the image. Is it real or virtual? Well, you say if it's real, then the actual light rays converge. If it's virtual, it's extensions of the light rays that converge. So it must be virtual. It's 
behind the mirror, you know that those light rays don't go through the mirror to the other side, so it has to be virtual. <coughs> is it upright or inverted? Well, the object is, is upright, it's above the axis. The image also appears to be upright. <coughs> so it's upright. Is it enlarged and reduced or unmagnified? And so for this one, you're going to say, well, how tall is that object compared to this height of the image? Is the image taller or smaller than the object? And it's obviously taller. So it's an enlarged image produced by a concave mirror with an object inside the focal point. So in summary, an object located inside the focal point of a concave mirror produces a virtual upright and enlarged image. All three that we were able to figure out. The, um, so here's three, three rays. That, this is the textbook uh, version of it. Um, they got this first ray is the one that we, we looked at. This um, second ray, we didn't actually look at this one, but this is another one that you can draw. This one actually appears to come from the focal point right here and heads along the line between the focal point and the object. Heads toward the mirror and then comes off as a paraxial ray. And you say, that's pretty cool. How do you know that did that? And I say, just reverse it. You can take, bring it in this way. It hits the, it's a paraxial ray. And remember, we're, we're all, even though we seem to be in this diagram, far from the axis, we're always considering these to be close, close enough to the axis to consider them to be paraxial rays. So a paraxial ray comes, hits the mirror, comes down, and hits, heads through the focal point. So we've just basically reversed that. And then finally, the third one, which is also the one that we did, um, one that comes out from the tip along the line between the center of curvature and the tip of the object, and then gets reflected back on itself. And a virtual image, um, just like we were able to draw. This is a little prettier. but um, And this is the type of mirror that you use for a makeup mirror or a shaving mirror. They're concave. And what you do is you get up close to that mirror so that your face is inside the focal length. And then you get an upright. So obviously her, her face is here. Her image in the mirror is here. You get an upright but an enlarged image. So you can see your face better that way. Uh, another use for these are the heads-up displays used in, in mirrors. They use a concave mirror and a digital readout that's placed inside the focal length of this concave mirror. Then with a series of various uh, in mirrors and combiners and things, uh, you get an image of, of, of what's happening that's, that's projected into your field of view. It's, it's an amazing amazing thing and it uses a concave mirror with an object placed inside its focal length. 